Based on these results, we decided to repeat the study and open it up to local hunters to give them an opportunity to try non-lead bullets and compare them against conventional lead bullets. At a local shooting range, we shot 180 grain Remington core locked lead bullets and Barnes triple shot copper bullets into the same kind of bullet collection barrels and ballistic gelatin blocks as we used before. Well, there's a little bit of copper. Yeah, down just there. a little bit, but there's not. Down uh, underneath. And there's mm -hmm. the. Uh, they, they typically retain about 98%. Look at that. Okay, it's great, but none in the back. Well, look at the bottom. the bottom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see all that. If that was a hog on the side, you shoot him right in the lungs. That's a lot of, yeah. a lot of lead in there. I think that my grandson loves a wild hog sausage in that. The ballistic gel results were similar to those obtained last time also. The first shot into the gel is of a lead bullet and the second of a copper bullet. This segment shows the two bullet wound channels side by side for comparison. The lower channel shows the lead fragments surrounding the bullet's path, while the upper channel is of the copper bullet, and as you can see, lacks the similar fragmentation. So why is fragmentation a concern? The following photos are of x-rays from the study cited earlier that examined lead bullet fragmentation in mule deer. The first photo shows the wound channel in the chest of a mule deer after being shot with a Remington 7mm mag lead bullet. Notice the location of the 9mm carbon rod inserted into the bullet path and the many lead fragments found as far as 3 inches away from the wound channel. The lead fragments appear on the x-ray as opaque white shapes. Any bone chips would be nearly invisible due to their much lower density. For instance, notice that you can see right through the rib bones on the x-rays. The second photo shows the gut pile, and again, how many bullet fragments remain behind. The last photo shows an x-ray of a condor and the leg fragments found in the digestive system after the animal was brought in for emergency treatment for lead poisoning. This is another x-ray of a condor with lead poisoning that had been captured that shows the additional lead fragments in the digestive tract. Notice in the close-up view that when you compare the shape and size of these fragments, how similar they are to the fragments in the deer x-rays. When cross-sections are compared between the lead and non-lead designs, one can see why fragmentation is not an issue with the non-lead bullets. Their all copper design means that because of the hard metal, when the bullet impacts, the nose of the bullet peels back, leaving a flower petal shaped bullet intact that doesn't come apart. Bullets made of much softer lead materials erode away into little pieces under the tremendous forces present when a projectile traveling at almost two times the speed of sound hits animal tissue. These results demonstrated to us that while the bonded core lead bullets showed less fragmentation than unbonded designs, they still fragment enough to be a hazard to both wildlife and humans consuming the animals being shot. And as the x-rays of the deer showed, the tiny size of the lead fragments and the large distance that they travel from the wound channel means that it would be impossible to remove all the fragments while processing the deer, pig, or elk. Many of the fragments were the size of pepper flakes or smaller. Being hunters ourselves and understanding better now how lead rifle bullets fragment, the obvious next question we had was, does this lead end up in the meat after it was processed?